Good afternoon and what is a bright, warm but breezy day. It is Thursday the 1st of September and I'm in the Reed Nook with a nice hot cup of tea. And a stack of parcels to unbox. And let's see what I'm doing. Done that one. Let's find out what is next. Oh. What I'm going to extract from this one uh, is this, which is the Curtium Archival Collection, Volume 1, The Stafford House Campaign, a collection of Greg Stafford's Rimquest campaign essays from 1978 to 1981. Um, so this is um, preview edition. Um, and we open up what we've got inside is this um and it's a list of contents um basically from dragon's past uh son of sartar and Ferrer's gazette now a bit of introduction here uh which is written by rick mites uh starting in the 1970s a common method for sharing role-playing game information was via a variety of amateur press association publications known as apas now um these you if you really these uh um were kind of collections of con uh, um, curated content uh put together by one person uh everyone would submit sort of like several pages and the curator would put them all together and publish the issue and typically they were mimeographed uh poor quality uh, they were akin to fanzines but really um, not so much a sort of like a curated collection of, of sort of like articles, but more sort of like personal, personal sort of mini sections that would each author would contribute. Um, so not quite a magazine, not quite a fanzine, somewhere in between. Um, a lot of the excursions is still ongoing, but, um, and it has published over 500 issues. Um, in the past, well, nearly, you know, 50 years. Um, and what this is, is Greg's own contributions to um, an Amateur Press Association um, publication. So, um, it's uh, what Rick Mikes has done, is tracked these down and collected them for posterity. And this is just volume one. Um, so uh, this was published um, so, um, Dragon's Past. This opens up um, essentially um, this is where Greg introduces himself, introduces what he's, he's running um, and, um, and really you get a sort of like it's almost like Here's a letter from Greg uh, introducing himself to the wider hobby, to the reader, um, and sort of like making this much more sort of like personal than perhaps a magazine article might have done. Um, and it's interesting that uh, what you have in here is um, sort of like general background on um, him running his games and actually meant covering previous issues <coughs> now in fanzines and magazines what you had in what you'd have is um essentially uh letters pages here um you have sort of like responses within their own personal author sections um so comments to uh essentially we have um uh, mark children's uh, cast uh, provoked by a previous issue so there we go um, provoked by a previous issue and um, so what Greg is doing and what every API contributor do he would pull something out and say well I quote from what you wrote here is where I think you are wrong and there will be sort of like different discussions going on in each different sections of e um, each author's contribution or block contribution to the API um, so this is a lot of contribution, uh, you know, discussion, going back and forth, 
Um, and the, the going back and forth sort of like tends to build over time. Um, then we've Dragon's Past, um, and here he's beginning to discuss his campaign. Um, you know, planned campaign, plans for the Sartar campaign, the Lunar campaign, the HeroQuest campaign, the miscellane miscellaneous scenarios. Um, and so what we have here is, is Greg's first is, is, is thoughts down on paper in print on what he's going to do. Um, and we keep getting sessions. So this is, so that is, um, so, so basically just have a date. Um, trying to see. It does Dragon Pass 2 doesn't, but Drag, um, Dragon Pass 3 does, which is, um, uh, which is uh, March 19, 1979. Um, so, and there here we have developments here, the latest news of his campaign, 1613. And likely is that this is inform this is background and information that he would revisit again and again over the years to come as he develops um, Glorantha further and further as a co as um, a commercial product which others could visit and explore. Um, uh, and there isn't, as I said, a lot to really look at in this. It's a lot of big, a big sort of like wall of text, um, but it's kind of easy. Um, to, to work out you actually have sort of like um, you know just the campaign overview and how it's flowing through um, you know so we have sort of like um, it, it's um, uh, you know um, recent campaign events such as Stormball quest and then the, the adventurers who set up go to the Pharaoh's palace Seopolis um, as uh, thrice born sets out um, and then we get to uh, Termitane agrees, Redbird leaves, so on into the cave, cave cleaning, uh, gleaning or cleaning, um, so on. Just campaign events are described in short paragraphs, almost in bullet form note. Um, and at the same time, then we have a discussion of the military campaign, opening moves in the Salsa Rebellion um, in, in ST 1613. And it's interesting to note that you really kind of go with, the, you know, in, in 1979, 1980, Greg Stafford is discussing the year 1613. And really that kind of period of sort of like that, that decade, 1610 through to 1620, is really sort of where the focus for RuneQuest has been for much of its history. Uh, pushing it on slowly up into the point of the Great Winter where you have a, a 1619, 1620, 1621 and so on. And then we get up to the move and finally we sort of finally get the, the move of the campaign moving it forward to 1625 with the uh, release of Request of Role Playing and Grantha. But here, um, you know, um, what we have is a discussion of those early campaign notes and uh, um, really the inspiration of, what, of what's, what's to come, like for example, um, the trip to Miss Candace tower and I pretty much believe that sort of like appeared more recently in one of the um, I think it's the, the um, Pegasus Plateau it appears in one of the scenarios in there um, at, uh, and then we have actually have for example the journey back to Rainbow Mounds um, um, and that's interesting to, to, to read through because um, you know, literally my player characters are, re are visiting the Rainbow Mountains for the first time right now. Uh, you know, uh, they've just um, almost been t t almost been taken down by White Eye. Good rolls um, meant they managed to take him down fairly quickly. Um, but it was a fearsome fight. Um, but I'm doing that as a flashback, um, so I can run, I can I can play through Return to Rainbow Mounds in the in the starter set. Um, uh, and we were sort of things like Stormball Day in Boldhome, um, and um, you know, just camp continuing campaigns that Greg was running at this time. So, um, you know, we have campaign updates, records, and history. Um, and then we have a we actually have a very early. So it's sort of, I say it early, but a breakdown of the Sartar tribes, um, fairly heavily marked on there. Um, right. 
uh, it's one of the few illustrations in here um, and we have things like uh, the journey to Jufrenella, a hero quest path um, and then the adventures a basic table sort of like marking out the adventures of 1615 thus far um, and you know what you can do with all of this is take it um, and use it as inspiration there's nothing to stop you um, using the inspiration the content here as inspiration of adventures of it for your own um, but, uh, and then we have things like um, uh, expedition fourth duck tower um, the duck tower is a sort of like semi kind of joke because it really sort of it tends it, it comes out of um, you know the the, 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 the the dark tower as a scenario um, by Jano uh, uh, um, Jacques, um, which uh, Goodman Games is redoing um, as part of his original adventures reincarnated. Um, and then the joke essentially you extend to that you say you have actually have Dork Tower which is the um, John Kovalik's continuing um, webcomic and also Duck Tower um, so the joke gets gets carried over and, and twisted uh, and then we have Son of Sartor the first issue an APA designed by Greg Stafford in 1979 but, uh, um, so it's 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 you know you've got the comments to Chuck Huber based on a previous issue, um, uh, to a new request ability, uh, a, a, to, a note to John Sapi uh, Sapienza, uh, an early contributor to, to Glorantha, including a co-author of the scenario Jorthan's Rescue, um, which I uh, updated for the current edition, um, and um, and. Yeah, so, you know, here we have a table for Sartorite Occupations chart roll. So he's putting in game content there as well, background information, uh, discussing, you know, previous experience in Sartar and more. Um, at, uh, and at the same time, you know, if not doing that, responding to other people, uh, to queries and so on. Um, and even looking at um, uh, the uh, cults of Cisnella, um, looking at knights, priests, and sorcerers in Glorantha, um, and methods of wizardry, all background, deep, sort of like deep background that, that um, you have, you know, his early, um, you know, the early thoughts, um, and, and so on about the game and how it's progressing. Um, we even have what we've got. Um, uh, the basic dragon pass encounter charts rounding this out the last few pages and so on uh, and then we have the ferris gazette sea season set uh, presenting holy country news so again we have a shift in focus from sarsal down to the holy country um, at, uh, and so on um, and then not quite sure what this is oh we've got a, basically a room um, Rune Master's um, character list there. Um, that's the last sort of thing in in this little volume. So, Cosium Archival, like our Archival Collection, Volume One, the Stafford House Campaign. Well, actually, multiple campaigns it would see from this. Now, this would obviously be of interest to any um, Granthophile, any scholar of the game. Um, you know, uh, because so much of this. Um, is uh, is unavailable um, because of its age, its condition. A few a few hundred copies would have been printed and then become unavailable over the years because they got damaged, thrown away. Uh, they were cheaply produced. Um, and Rick Mites, a uh, dedicated collector, has delved into this and um, really uh, uh, um, you know pulled this content out and represented it for uh, the devotee. So yes, I think this is going to be an interesting book to read and review. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this unboxing in the Nook. If you have, then please do click on the like button down below. And of course, uh, if you've got any comments or feedback, I appreciate you taking the time to post.
post those. Uh, and um, if you want to be alerted to yet more unboxings in the Nook where you'll see me out here uh, with a parcel and a book or game which I will unbox and chat about to the best extent of my knowledge, all of course accompanied by um, a nice cup, um, a nice cup of tea. Um, then please do click on that like button down below. Sorry, click on the subscribe button down below. Uh, and I would note this is actually sort of like, um, I believe this is sort of like an illustration, sort of like a snake pipe hollow. In fact, it might, might have actually been the cover of the first edition of Snake Pipe Hollow. Anyway, thanks again for watching another unboxing the Nook. I'll be back again soon with another one. Bye for now.